goodies, as we've heard leaked into the papers. Joining me now, our Sunday trio of New South Wales Liberal Senator Holly Hughes, former Labor MP Michael Danby, and businesswoman and lawyer Carolyn DeRusso. Team, good to have you here. Holly, I want to start with you, if I may. Tuesday's budget. Good um, to be back. Good to be back, Michael. Good to have you back. The Treasurer talks a mean game, and he's been speaking in doomsday kind of phrases leading mm. up to this week, but they don't seem too concerned about the welfare bill. No, but what's really interesting is you won't almost hear the words coming out of Jim Chalmers' mouth or anyone else in this Labor government with regards to the windfall that's now uh, being seen on the budget bottom line thanks to the continual surge in commodities prices. Yeah. So there's 50 to $100 billion better off uh, on the budget, uh, but you, of course, won't hear any of that coming out of Jim Chalmers' mouth because everything is the fault of the previous government and there can be no recognition of this better uh, position that we're actually in. But they also seem intent on ensuring that they are boosting the coffers of families at earning over $350,000 a year, all whilst trying to take tax cuts back from families who are earning over $45,000 a year. So uh, if you've got kids, you might be about to get a bit of a boon if your kids are in childcare or you're about to have more with paid parental leave expanding out to $350,000 per year families. Uh, but I'm still not convinced they're not going to try and walk back those stage three tax cuts, which will impact everybody earning more than $45,000 a year. They will be very, very clear to try and hand out some of their promises mentioned during the campaign, won't they, Michael? Uh, they will. Um, I think they'd be mad to walk back the, the tax cuts. I mean, governments that sort of uh, promise one thing and don't don't deliver, people remember it. Yep. Just the betrayal, not even the uh, the the content of it. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm an old um, Paul Keating fiscal responsibility person. Uh, we've got enormous foreign debt. Um, I hope us still being the lucky country and, as Holly says, getting these windfalls from high commodity prices is going to help us uh, pay this off on time. But it's, uh, you know, it's coming down the, the road for us. Very true. Let's go to the UK. It's been a mad, mad week, but it could be an even madder week because Boris is back from the Caribbean. I know uh, we've got 100 votes in the pocket of Rishu Sunak already. Mm. Is this possible? I sincerely hope not. And, I mean, I'm not sure what is more terrifying than Boris coming back as Prime Minister or Boris after spending a week in the sun, because I really don't think he's necessarily got the complexion for it. Um, but, look, anything is possible. And the, the thing with Boris is he's pretty, he's pretty hardy, you know? Like, he, he's... Even in those dying days of his prime ministership, he was still pretty bolshy about his position. So it, it would not surprise me in the slightest if he threw his hat in the ring and had another crack. Um, I'm not sure if there's necessarily a number three person who could end up in the race. It has all just been such a schmozzle. Yeah. It has all just been such a schmozzle. So can someone who is just sensible and competent please throw their hat in the ring? take hold of the reins and get the show on the road. You've put uh, an image in my mind of Boris Johnson and a pair of budgie smugglers. Yeah, I can't get rid of it? it. I can't get rid of it. Sorry. Holly Hughes, I, I want to talk about um, these three Australian sporting uh, organisations who have looked gift horses in the mouth because they've been fakely offended by the connection to mining. Um, the world is not perfect. The world is transitioning when it comes to a green future, people have got to hold on. This is, should not be a case of black and white, should it? No, and those commodity prices we're talking about and the objection to mining, it'll be some of that tax revenue and boons from commodity prices that might contribute to some of those stadiums that these sports stars need to play yeah. in, uh, as well as contribute across the economy. I mean, I'm look, I'm sick to it, uh, to the back teeth of these people. They are just such hypocrites. The fact that Gina is being persecuted around Hancock and what her father said 40 years ago, you know what she said? Now, what's the view? This is a company who spends hundreds of millions of dollars investing in Indigenous programs, yep. who employs more Indigenous Australians, who contributes to the overall wealth of this country, let alone what Gina does 
uh, and quite often very quietly. Correct. Uh, certainly, I think before the last Olympics, m most people had no idea what she had invested in swimming Australia, rowing Australia, the artistic swimming and the volleyball. Uh, I think both, uh, whatever his name is with the cricket, it's not my thing, the hypocrite Pat Cummins who drives around in a Range Rover, do as I say, not as I do, uh, is just absolutely pathetic. And he's ruining it for everyone coming behind him. Yeah. They don't want to make, the, they don't want to take the money. We'll take it out of their own salary and let the game to continue to invest in those coming behind. I'd never heard of the guy. Don't really care if I hear about him ever again. Does nothing to make anyone want to watch the sport. Uh, and, and as for the netballers, when your entire sport's on the brink of bankruptcy and $15 million uh. comes walking in the door, uh, it is absolute insanity yep. uh, that some objection from someone who has actually never played, who's only ever been a reserve, brings up an objection from 40 years ago and everyone gets in line. I yep. just think it's absolutely pathetic. Concentrate on catching the ball and sticking it through a ring or whatever it is you do and leave politics alone.